Eldiver 14571 was laughing. He was just stabbing things and laughing. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Reginald here. Sometime back, I made this video about how I might improve the state of Helldivers 2. After that, I was graciously invited to sit on a panel on Thick Fillet's stream and discuss the state of this beloved title. I had a chance to give my input, but I won't pretend everyone saw it. What I'm going to do instead is more or less bullet point my suggestions, compare them to how the game has changed, and do something of a postmortem on these changes. This is going to be a video where I pull out a few of those product manager skills I occasionally talk about, so settle in, we're going deep. Let's do a quick history lesson. The game launched February 2024 and quickly became an internet-wide phenomenon. Eventually, naturally, the game bled its initial players and settled into something of a more natural player base, sometime around June of 2024. The last high point of patches before the big slump, as I will call it, was Democratic Detonation, which included a war bond full of relatively popular equipment and inventive guns. With the release of Polar Patriots, players started to notice a trend of downwards balance, nerfing, and somewhat uninteresting design choices for new equipment. From then on, the game design seemed to suffer from bad balance decisions, at least according to the vocal majority. These patches and changes did have their adherence amongst the community, but the player numbers and the developers' reactions to, to those player numbers are telling. With the release of Escalation of Freedom, there was a huge backlash as sections of the game that were broadly disliked as part of the core gameplay loop were heavily emphasized, and sections of the game design that were broadly liked were de-emphasized. A perfect example of this was the inclusion of armored striders at high difficulty. We went from an engaging enemy that was dangerous from the front, except for super difficult skill shots, but was killable with anything from the side, providing maneuver and ambush incentives, to an enemy that heavily emphasized ragdoll attacks and armor-gated most weapons out of effectiveness against them. We traded fun for unfun. This design paradigm happened all over the place, with the big tentacle tier I mean terminated to the rocket tank and ever onwards. Specifically, these design failures continued to degrade consumer joy in the product and drive down player numbers, such that by the middle of August, the average player count had dropped from the upper 40,000s to the low 20,000s. This then is the meat of the discussion. Let's look at the kind of suggestions I had and let's look at what they more or less did. Spoiler, they're not so far off. Finally, let's look at the results and see how that went. On August 9th, I published a video, Helldivers is a problem, I have solutions, and on Thick's fillet stream, I also proposed a few things. This is an aggregated list of solutions. Number one, most importantly, start patching ASAP. Make changes right away to win back trust and keep doing it. Like bump up like like a third of the weapons that much and just see what the players think of All that All of the weapons. weapons. And then put a poll out there and get, a, get feedback. Just, and then if it works on that first third of the weapons, do the rest. This was ultimately done by Arrowhead as a series of changed teasers followed by regular large balance passes. 2. Significantly increase all weapon damage and effectiveness against enemies. This more or less was heavily implemented. 3. Give certain enemies visual and audio tells that help indicate their intent to fire or attack. I am aware that there were adjustments to audio for some enemies, but I'm not aware of any explicit tells visually that have been made. 4. Finally make stealth real. At this time, I don't think any change has been made to the stealth system. I don't recall reading it in any of the patch notes in preparation for this video. 5. Give the player more time to stop call-ins for bugs and boss. I don't believe this has been addressed either, but Arrowhead did choose to address the patrol spawn behavior, which I see as an attempt to address the same core issues around gameplay interactions. Ultimately, the goal was to make enemies more interesting to engage with and less punishing overall, while still being fun and combative. Number 6. Make call-ins less of a snowball so that I could fight, clear, and move. Ultimately, by definition, this has been addressed by making the player more effective as a combatant by buffing all the weapons as they've done. 7. Make light enemies more numerous and heavier enemies less numerous. 8. Make a few more lighter enemies that are dangerous and need to be prioritized so that my primary and secondary have something to do. For these two, point 7 and 8, they're really about how to achieve better difficulty curves without invalidating different loadouts. With massive reworks to the armor system, all my complaints in this domain were addressed in a satisfactory manner. How they addressed it was, in many ways, harder than how I would have done so, yet it is way more pleasant than what I could have hoped for, since I didn't necessarily have to change the enemy distribution to achieve it. Though I do feel that maybe heavy armor pen on the senator was a bit much, then again it's very cinematic to be able to pull your pistol and do the whole saving Prior Brian thing and I am otherwise strongly in favor of the way things have shaken out. It's really fun to feel effective in my games. Number 9. Make weapons weirder and more complex. This seems like a direction Arrowhead is trying to get to. Programmable ammunition is a great example of this, and can I just say, I called this one? Number 10. Focus the game on fun over challenge, then add challenge back into it. This is really part of my vision statement for how to do it, but this ultimately is what they've done as well. This 
This appears to have been a big driver for the 60 Day Revival Pass, focusing on what creates cinematic and entertaining moments that breed those fun player stories you want to tell your friends about and making the gameplay actually fun at the core level, so that I have a reason to keep coming back and shoot stuff. So how have things shaken out? What's the real verdict? Well, in my view, the game is a lot more fun to play. It's easier, yes, but not catastrophically so. I've been playing it more and having fun when I do play it, and that's a good sign. I wasn't having fun when I made that video on August 9th. My entire impression playing today was, I'm just having so little fun right now. Now I am. We are just having an absolute riot. In that sense, I think the game is subjectively in a better place, but what about objectively? Is the game doing better? How do we judge from a product perspective? Let's define some KPIs. KPIs, key performance indicators, are a product tool. A dead simple concept, really, that one can use to define success and measure against it. Picking good criteria is as important as achieving good scores on those criteria. Misaligned criteria will result in false positives, so obviously part of the struggle of making a KPI is just defining it properly. So what are some measurements we could use to say whether or not these patches were successful in some kind of objective way? Here's some ideas. Player counts, including peaks, averages, and trend. Player sentiment, player retention, microtransaction sales, and profits generated. Now those last two, I cannot really provide any resource to gather data from for those pieces. I won't have insider numbers, but I want to explain the purpose of microtransaction sales as a measure versus profits. Profits would just be like the raw numbers and trends of how much money you're making or losing. Always important to keep track of, numbers should go up, if number go down then bad. But the sales of microtransactions can have some extra layers inside it. Are we seeing sales within a given time window? Is the average number of those sales going up or down? When a new Warbond is released, are we seeing more or less interest in the last few times in relation to the player sentiment? Are we seeing an effect on the microtransaction sales at all? Mixed with other metrics, you can see how this can serve as an indicator of player sentiment. Players who like a game and are invested will spend more money on it than players who don't. So knowing that, we can use this as kind of a stand-in for sentiment or as a confirmation of sentiment data. Now onto our analysis. We are pretty lucky that we can use SteamDB to access peak concurrent player statistics for Helldivers 2. This measure is used by basically everyone when talking about games and their current status, and it's no wonder. More players using a live service game is an indication of that game's success. So are we seeing increases in the typical size of the player base since the hard times? Yeah, absolutely. Arrowhead's Helldivers 2 has recovered between 10 and 20,000 concurrent players since the worst of it. How about player sentiment? There's lots of ways to measure this. We could read forum posts, Discord posts, Steam reviews and Steam comments, or even check the average volume of watchers and interactions for different popular streamers and tubers. If they are succeeding, their videos are doing well, then there's clearly interest in the game at least. Though whether that interest is good or bad, we would need to judge. But how's Helldivers 2 doing sentiment-wise? Well, Bellular News put it very well. Take a look at the reviews. The three-month view of them is absolutely perfect for today's purpose. From extreme negativity to recent reviews being 91% positive. So yes, the buffs and the 60-day plan helped. That's where the immediate pivot came from. But after that, after the spike of positive reviews, we have seen consistent net positives every single day. That is constant satisfaction, not just flash in the pan success that fails to keep people around. And lastly, what about the retention? Do we have any measures for this that we can access? Well, I do have a good stand in, in my opinion, which might be trend. Are we seeing continued growth or decline in the player base? If we are seeing growth in the player base, which we are, then it's pretty likely we're retaining players and not losing them. That's not a guarantee, but it's likely. Like I said, this is a stand in. There are other ways to measure this kind of thing, but I won't have access to that kind of data. But as you can see here, the volume of players is definitely on the trend upwards, and so if the game continues to do well, we can expect to hit some sort of higher plateau where the sort of number of players that are continuing to play the game stays about the same. So what is my assessment based on the data we have? Is Helldiver 2 doing well? Yeah, I think so. I'm certainly happier with it. Another question might be, did I provide good advice? Regardless of whether or not it was actually heard by Arrowhead, it would be interesting to see how I did. While I did show earlier that the 60-day plan had a fair bit of what I suggested, or at least parallel interpretations of what I suggested in it, so the next question we might ask to make a good assessment of how I did was, was the 60 day plan a success? And I think the answer to that question is yes. I think the numbers bear that out pretty well. So that is really it. I hope you enjoyed this little exercise. It's a bit different than a typical review, but I wanted to try something new and a little bit different than what people typically put out on YouTube. So thanks so much for visiting. Bye-bye.